Hi everyone, my name is Casey Smith and I'm a realtor in the Middle Georgia area. Today I'm going to be giving some tips for some first time home buyers. So hopefully this will help you get started on your home purchase. Your first step is going to be getting pre-qualified. So you're going to want to have a pre-qualification letter anytime you're going to put in an offer. It makes a stronger offer, it shows the seller that you're serious, all of that. So. Going to a lender, getting pre-qualified, finding out what loans you are qualified for, and finding out can you afford closing costs. Uh, a lot of first-time home buyers don't realize that closing costs are can be a significant amount and they're not really prepared for that. So just getting a lot of information up front so you know what to expect. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to meet with your realtor and go over the contracts. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do with first-time home buyers is to present them with contracts at one of our first meetings so that they can familiarize themselves with what's gonna happen once they start putting in offers. There's a lot of questions that come up when you've never purchased a home before and it can be very daunting and overwhelming. So we like to go over the contracts and that way when we get to the purchasing and putting in offers, which is a step that can go very fast, they're already a little bit more familiar with the contracts and they can kind of narrow down the questions they're going to have when we're putting in the offers. They'll already have an idea of, oh, I wanted to know about this. Oh, what does that mean? And there's just so much information and I think it's a really important thing to do is just really get yourself sat down, look at the contracts, read all that legalese. I know it's daunting. I know it's not a fun thing to do, but it's great to have it up front so you know what to expect. Okay, so some of the big terms that you're gonna want to familiarize yourself with, especially when you start getting to the offer and going through the contracts. Uh, first one is asking price versus purchase price. So obviously you've looked at the listing, you've seen what the seller's asking and that is the price they'd like to see out of their home. Purchase price is gonna be the price that you're purchasing the home at. So what you're looking at on your contract with purchase price is the price that you're offering to purchase this home at. So you wanna kinda of talk to your realtor, see if they can help you with some comps and help you with making sure you get the right kind of pricing in. Usually, you don't wanna miss out on a home based on too low of an offer and you obviously don't wanna pay more than the house is worth. So it's good to know where you should be at on your offer price. Another big term that you're gonna to wanna to look at is the seller paid closing costs. So as I mentioned before in the loan portion is there are some significant closing costs for the buyer's side. That's usually the largest sum of closing costs is the buyer's side because of a lot of the closing costs are attached to the loan. So you're getting a loan and there are a lot of fees that go along with getting that loan processed. So the important thing is to know whether or not you can afford to pay your closing costs and that'll really help you in your offer. In addition to that, you can also ask for a seller to pay some or all of your closing costs. There's a whole lot of information that goes into that. There's your closing costs, there's your escrow setup. There's a lot um, that you can go over with your realtor to kind of help you figure out where you're at on how much closing costs you need to or want to ask for. It can be a good negotiating factor. So if you're really in a competitive market and you're looking to put in an offer, with competing offers, you may not wanna ask for any closing costs if you don't have to. It'll make your offer stand out quite a bit more if you don't need those closing costs. So you really need to go over this with your realtor and see where the market is that you're purchasing in. Another term you're gonna to wanna to familiarize yourself with is earnest money. Earnest money is good faith money or a deposit towards the purchase of the home. So the earnest money is gonna go into an escrow account uh, say you put $1,000 down as earnest money, so that's your deposit towards the home. It's in an escrow account until closing. Once the earnest money is in the escrow account, it will stay there until closing or until the contract is terminated. If the contract is terminated, the money will be distributed to the appropriate party, and if it goes to closing, that money will go towards the purchase of your home. So it could go towards your closing costs, your down payment, or the actual purchase price, depending on your circumstances and your loan type. Some important facts to remember about earnest money. Earnest money will go towards the purchase of your home. 
if the contract is fulfilled. Under the correct circumstances, the earnest money can go back to the buyer. A note to remember is earnest money can go to the seller if buyer breaches contract and does not purchase the home for a reason not set out in the contract. Another term that a lot of first time home buyers and even repeat home buyers are not familiar with is option money. So option money differs from earnest money in the fact that option money does not go back to the buyer. So once you're under contract and you provide that option money, that is money the seller gets to keep even if you decide you don't want to purchase this home within your due diligence period. So that a lot of times, it, this is a really significant one if you're in a very competitive situation and you know there are competing offers. So that would be something that can make your offer stand out against the rest of the offers is that you're offering them money that they'll get to keep regardless, that they're not going to go into this contract, take their house off the market, and you're going to back out. So it gives them that extra security and a lot of buyers will split the money between option money and earnest money so maybe put half in option money and half in earnest money it's there's a lot of different ways you can play with that talk to your realtor and find out what the best options are for you and if that's something that you would want to present in your offer it's important to remember that option money can go towards the purchase of your home or it can be in addition to the purchase price and any other funds agreed upon within your contract. Always remember, no matter what, once your contract is accepted, if you have option money, option money will go back to the seller. Another term you've heard me say several times previously is the due diligence period. So the due diligence period is the time for you to have your home inspections, have your well inspections, your pool inspections, anything that you need inspected to make sure that there's nothing wrong with this home, but nothing that's going to prevent you from wanting to purchase this home. So the due diligence period is a negotiable number here in Georgia. So we can negotiate how long the due diligence period is. Sometimes that can help it in your competitiveness of your offer. If you know you can get your due diligence period done and quicker, that definitely helps with your offer. But it's really that time that you're just gonna have all of your home inspections done and you're gonna make sure that there's nothing that'll prevent you from wanting to purchase this home. So the next thing you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with is the loan contingency. So as I mentioned at the beginning, that when you go to your lender, you're gonna wanna find out what loan types you qualify for and what the pros and cons are with each to find out which one's gonna be the best option for you at this time. And you're gonna attach the appropriate loan contingency to your contract. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you know whether or not you're with a conventional FHA, VA, USDA. They all have different contingencies and different terms and different things that have to go along with them. So you'll wanna make sure you go over the different loan contingency with your realtor and find out what your appraisal contingency is within that and what your loan contingency, how long your loan contingency is. It often isn't the length of the contract. So the loan contingency not being the length of the contract really means that say you're purchasing this home in 30 days, but your loan contingency is 21 days. That means that your lender needs to make sure that they get you qualified for that loan within the 21 days. If they're not going to have you qualified and they're going to provide you with a letter that says you didn't qualify for the loan once they've really dug deep and got to the approval rather than the pre-qualification stage, then you're going to need to provide that letter to the seller prior to the end of that loan contingency is the best option for you. So talk to your realtor and go over all the different options, all the different um, facts and what, what each one means because it can differ from state to state and area to area. So it's really good to know what you're dealing with. Another area you may notice in your contract is a special stipulation area. Special stipulation is gonna be where you add anything in addition that you want to have included with your home, such as the seller paying for a home buyer's warranty, leaving the refrigerator. You can ask for just about anything. If you wanna ask for something along the lines of they leave the sofa or a dining room hutch, talk about this with your realtor and your lender 
just to make sure this is not an item that's going to affect your loan. Okay, so we've gone over all the contracts, you've submitted some offers, you've had one accepted, and you're nearly to closing. So a little prior to closing, you're gonna start receiving some information from your lender. You'll get closing disclosures, and that'll tell you where all the funds are going, and it'll tell you what your cash to close is. So this will tell you what you need to bring to the closing table in order to close on your home. And then after that, you're gonna want to go ahead and schedule your utilities that you can get scheduled ahead of time so that everything is scheduled to be put in your name. And so you don't find that you don't have electric or you don't have water or things like that once you take over ownership of the home. Um, sometimes there are utilities that you may need a document from closing to turn on. Here in Middle Georgia, it's the water. You have to bring a document from closing to show you own the home before they'll put the water in your name. If that's the case, then just hold off till after closing on that one, but get everything you can scheduled ahead of time so you don't have that extra headache on closing day. The next thing you'll do is either a day prior to closing or the day of closing, you'll do a final walkthrough with your realtor. And during the final walkthrough, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the home is exactly what you were expecting, that there's no surprises on something that they've changed from the time that you've put in the contract and through this whole process. They haven't ripped out any cabinetry or anything major like that. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of the stipulations or anything you've asked for in amendments has been taken care of, whether it be something like painting or if there's a repair that was asked to be done or something along those lines. You'll just make sure all of that stuff is complete and everything's exactly what was expected based on y'all's contract for the home. All right, you've made it to the closing table. So the only little piece of advice here is you're gonna be signing a lot of documents. First time home buyers never expect this, but once you finish that, congratulations, you'll be homeowners. Um, thank you guys for watching my video. I'm glad I was able to help you with a little bit of information to prepare you for the home purchase. Let me know if you have any questions or if there are any topics y'all would like me to discuss. All right, I look forward to talking to y'all again next time. Thank you and like my video and subscribe to my channel, please. While my YouTube channel is meant to get you started and hopefully point you in the right direction, it is by no means meant to replace the advice of having your own real estate professional, nor is it meant to be your only source of real estate advice. You should always talk to your own real estate professional. Purchasing property is a major undertaking and each contract and each purchase has its own complications. A real estate professional can help keep you on track and give you advice specific to your area. Thank you and good luck.